Welcome to Declassifying the Paranormal. Here we reveal the secrets that sinister organizations attempt to conceal from the world, objects and entities that could shake the very foundations of what we think is, and is not, possible. Today we have secured documents belonging to the SCP Foundation, and will reveal to you the nature of SCP-2747. Item Number SCP-2747 Object Class Euclid Keta Threat Level Green Black Special Containment Procedures Foundation Watchdog Algorithms are to monitor online and print media for mention of SCP-2747 positive key phrases. All matches are to be tagged and forwarded to the Department of Analytics, which will provide further confirmation of SCP-2747 manifestation. In case of positive identification, all affected media are to be suitably corrected via standard Foundation Media Alteration Protocols, 912-A Twilight Zone, 943-A Poisoned Well. Observational Procedure Lucid Chalice Controlled observation of SCP-2747 will take place using local computing resources to procedurally generate narratives at varying levels of complexity and nestedness. Simultaneously, descriptions of the narratives are to be generated using Foundation Media Parsing Analytics slash Meta Analytics software, at varying degrees of abstraction. The results can then be examined for signs of SCP-2747 by periodically scanning for data irregularities. Any generated narrative containing such irregularities can then be flagged as an instance of SCP-2747, with its seed conditions subsequently tagged as SCP-2747 conducive. Given a large enough sample size, the boundary conditions of SCP-2747 can then be identified and mapped with a sufficient degree of clarity. Furthermore, a watch list of 7,000 artists is to be maintained and observed at all times for localized signs of SCP-2747 manifestation in their respective works using the aforementioned analytics slash meta-analytics software. In order to increase the observable resolution, and range of deeply nested metafictional manifestations, this watch list should consist mainly of individuals, groups and organizations whose works tend toward containing metafictional content, such as Mies Enabims and Stories Within Stories. The sponsoring and or covert influencing of such content creators can be sanctioned to that end. The results of Lucid Chalice will be documented within the current documentation as Appendix B. Description SCP-2747 is a phenomenon appearing in print and online media whereby platforms dedicated to the discussion of works of fiction begin to mention a non-existent instance of fictional media. Despite said non-existence, articles, posts, comments, and other related metacontent created with regard to the non-existent work of fiction will be found treating it as real. The non-existent work of fiction can be mentioned by various individuals in varying capacities, ranging from brief mentions in forum posts to being the subject of entire academic essays. Descriptions, screenshots, Photographs of physical copies, and brief segments of text from said work of fiction can often be discovered in SCP-2747 affected media. Descriptions of it are entirely consistent with each other, and it has proven possible to reconstruct whole segments of fictitious media via descriptions of it taken from SCP-2747 generated metacontent. A list of fictitious media generated by SCP-2747 has been appended below. See Appendix A. Where possible, the affected material can be traced to existing individuals, however, when questioned under duress, said individuals invariably deny having written the affected material, and deny all existence of the fictitious media mentioned within. SCP-2747 has never been documented in real time, all observed instances thus far have been recorded post hoc. No instances have been documented prior to January 2008. The reason for this is unknown. Conforms to pataphysical observations documented in full in Appendix B.
It is the current hypothesis of the Department of Analytics that SCP-2747 represents evidence of a naturally occurring anafabula, or anti-narrative. A cluster of interdependent signs, iconography and narimes. A narim is defined as a base unit of a narrative, much in the same way that a metheme denotes a base unit of myth, or a meme denotes a base unit of culture, that, when included to a sufficient extent within a fictional construct, leads to mutual annihilation. First-hand reconstruction of the anafabula's properties is impossible given its anomalous nature, but second-hand and third-hand descriptions have been generated from observational procedure lucid chalice and appended below. See Appendix B. It can affect through layers of metafictional narrative, i.e. a metanarrative containing the anafabula will cease to exist within the narrative, followed by the narrative itself disappearing from our reality. This interpretation of pataphysical reality, layers of metafictional narrative, has yet to be verified by foundation observations at large, but appear concurrent with observations obtained from transfictional anomalies such as SCP-1304, SCP-2614, and 001 8 8 the key identifier of the anafabula is that it invariably represents an in-universe antagonist or anathema in all manifestations of SCP-2747, likely due to inherent narium components indicating its alien, yet centralizing, nature. Update The above-mentioned hypothesis has been confirmed as a working model of SCP-2747. Please refer to Appendix B. Update the following procedures are to be enacted following the successful conclusion of observational procedure lucid chalice, see Appendix B. At no time are the properties of the anafabula as outlined in Appendix B to arise in real life, whether as a result of deliberate or natural action. Any object, person or event bearing more than significance level alpha to the semblance threshold is to be altered via whatever means possible. Access to information regarding SCP-2747, especially the information contained within Appendix B, is to be strictly limited to clearance levels 4-2747 and 3-analytics. Due to the pataphysical implications and inherent uncontainability of SCP-2747 as detailed in Appendix B, it is to be classified as Keta with immediate effect. Appendix A Partial list of manifestations of SCP-2747 Non-existent work referenced Punta de la Aspira Medium Short story Extent of manifestation 17 articles created and edited on http colon slash slash s dot wikipedia dot org Summary of work Punta de la Aspira English Tip of the Spire Slash Spiral is apparently a 1951 short story by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. It describes an unnamed protagonist as he sails down a river towards a desolate, black, horned mountain in order to deliver a gift to an unspecified recipient. The journey is rough and treacherous, and he dies of exhaustion at the end of the story appearing to be no closer to his goal than when he first began. The mountain is described in detail throughout the story, with recurring metaphors alternatingly alluding to it as either an abode of the gods or a demonic presence. Non-existent work referenced, Teitoru, Japanese. The film's title describes itself, it is the Japanese phonetic pronunciation for the English word title. Medium, animated film. Extent of manifestation. One article created on http colon slash slash www.tvtropes.org, with 55 edits made to various trope pages ranging from despair event horizon to foreshadowing, and what do you mean, it wasn't made on drugs? Summary of work, Teitoru appears to be an animated film directed by Satoshi Kon shortly before his death. It is described as a psychological thriller chronicling a struggling manga artist, as she attempts to complete and publish her first work under a tight deadline. Stress takes its toll and boundaries blur, 
she begins to hallucinate, and the movie ends ambiguously as to whether she has achieved her goal or succumbed to her weaknesses. Typical of Khan's style, the animation is described as meticulous, kaleidoscopic, and occasionally deeply disturbing. One scene features the protagonist physically grappling with the shadows in her apartment, described under the trope entry for your mind makes it real, as the manifestation of her creative block, which eventually engulf and consume her. Non-existent work referenced, no sister of mine. Medium, video game. Extent of manifestation, 77 threads on http colon slash slash forums dot something awful dot com, each carrying between 3 to 103 comments. Most users were established members of the Something Awful community. Summary of work, No Sister of Mine is supposedly a turn-based role-playing video game of the fantasy slash horror genre published by Pokahan for the Nintendo GameCube in 2005. While Pokahan existed as a major game development studio operating out of Seoul between 2002 and 2005, no record of No Sister of Mine has ever been found. According to reviewers, the player controls a party of six unnamed characters as they explore a ruined kingdom with the intention to find a lost companion referred to as Sister. It was widely panned by the reviewers, with much criticism being leveled at the glitch-filled battle system, incoherent dialogue, seemingly incomplete graphics, repetitive soundtrack described as nauseating and headache-inducing, as well as being impossible to complete. The game's non-playable characters continuously mention a coal-black thorn-bound tome that, when read from, would enable one to either obtain great power, or unleash a dreadful curse, what most reviewers assumed to be the final quest line required the player to backtrack through the game's previous areas and recover fragments of the tome using their newfound abilities. However, the reviewers unanimously claimed that no fragments can be found. One reviewer goes as far as to claim that the items themselves were never found inside the game's coding in the first place. Non existent work referenced The Scholopendra Wiki. Medium, Collaborative Fiction Extent of Manifestation, 49 different pieces of fanfiction, ranging from 343 to 2,401 words in length, posted on http colon slash slash www.fanfiction.net, each bearing between 1 and 6 comments. Summary of Work the Scholopendra Wiki is deduced to be an online collaborative fictional universe belonging to the horror, speculative fiction, and weird fiction genres. It appears to have been hosted on some form of wiki site, though the address itself is never mentioned. The exact nature of Scholopendra's plot is hard to discern, as the various pieces of fanfiction sport vastly differing storylines and a range of character interpretations further complicated by the involvement of other fictional universes and settings. What is known is that it involves a cast of seven characters wandering between a series of realms, amassing and collecting items possessing supernatural or abnormal properties. One item features heavily throughout the compiled works, a seven-sided obsidian emblem said to possess the power to destroy any object, person, or abstract concept with a single touch. It appears to be of great interest to the protagonists, who repeatedly make attempts to acquire it, however, it also appears to be currently in the possession of a sinister unnamed antagonist, who is alluded to repeatedly in several works, yet is never seen. Non-existent work referenced, I.O. Medium, Musical Album Extent of Manifestation, review columns in a total of 14 reputable publications, including the New Bombay Times, Pitchfork, and L.A. Flipside. Summary of Work, I.O. is described as the ninth studio album by the now-defunct English rock band Radiohead. It contains six tracks measuring a total of 34 minutes and 18 seconds. 
the majority of tracks appear to consist mostly of digitally manipulated samples from Radiohead's previous albums, layered over with sparse acoustic instrumentation and vocals. Reception of the album appears to be highly positive, with the exception of Pitchfork's Jessica Green who gave an average review of 7.0. In particular, Green felt that the album suffered from hasty and uncoordinated post-production, likely not undertaken by Radiohead themselves. Audio cuts between the fifth and sixth track were described to be unnecessarily jarring, given the seamless flow between every other track in the album. It is mentioned that the album uses a characteristic grating, binaural reverb layered over lead singer Tom York's solo vocal track as a musical motif, embodying what the new Bombay Times Gulshan Anirudh believes to be its central themes of spirals of isolation and inspiration, of feedback loops that resonate into the level of the deeply personal, the trembling core of creative psyche. Anirud also mentions lyrics referencing suicide and self-harm, though presented through a series of oblique metaphors. Io never fears to toy with the idea of self-hatred and self-desecration, yet the album as a whole seems to fall short of its mark, always orbiting yet never quite touching upon the dreadful center. Non-existent work referenced, Mavin, or A Treatise on the Metaphysics of Inner Space Travel, and the kingdom of Erika, whose name is Darkness Made Light, and further theological expositions thereof. Medium, Novel Extent of Manifestation Seven articles published in a single week in various academic journals of literary criticism, each by reputable scholars. Summary of Work Mavin is described as the contents of a manuscript and accompanying charcoal illustrations found in the house of Arithabal Abrahams in 2014. Abrahams appears to have been a reclusive writer, an artist working as a maintenance technician in Bloemfontein, South Africa and clinically diagnosed with schizophrenia Mavin, is a nested frame narrative written in Afrikaans purporting to be a novel by a 17th century Dutch mystic. A number of individuals partially match this description though no work similar to Mavin exists. It describes the journey of the mystic, whose name is only given as Mars, learning of the structure of the Earth's interior, as revealed to him in a vision. At the beginning of the novel, Mars dreams of a supernatural being that is aware of its nature as a dream entity, and is highly indebted to Mars for bringing it into existence. In exchange, it promises to divulge to Mars the secrets of the Earth. Mars, being corporeal, is unable to pass through the ground, and so the being decides to simply narrate the journey. It speaks of six realms demarcated by thresholds, ranging from the realm of treasure and minerals to an intangible plane of light and sound. Beyond these six realms lies another threshold, this time one of cold and silence, which is described to be the Earth's core, before it can be elaborated upon, Mars wakes, and the dream ends. Non-existent work referenced, Ex Lux. Medium, interactive novel. Extent of manifestation, in-depth posts on seven different fiction review blogs, along with a mention in a Time magazine article on experimental narrative forms. The title is also mentioned in 175 Twitter posts, largely in the context of recommending it as an interesting, if underrated, piece of interactive fiction. Summary of Work Ex Lux appears to be a work of interactive fiction of the mystery genre written in a mixture of English, Catalan, and Spanish. It is presented as a set of epistolary narratives from the points of view of six characters, and a stream of consciousness narration of ambiguous provenance. Readers navigate between the seven-story threads, discovering hints of a murder, or several murders, eventually, the narratives converge at a roadside diner during a thunderstorm, and the characters exchange their stories. From here, the resultant narrative structure cannot adequately be described as simple framing devices or stories within stories, 
as the inner tales eventually begin to intertwine such that later tales shed new light on ones recounted earlier, or themselves linked to segments of text earlier on in the narrative after lengthy detours. At several points, characters attempt to consult the testimony of an absent individual, referred to as the stranger. The identity of the murderers or victims is never known, nor does the story have a conventional ending. Appendix B – Observations and Conclusions from Lucid Chalice Data Lost Thank you for tuning in. We hope that you enjoyed this broadcast. If you did please subscribe, like and share it around. If you have any particular case files you'd like us to cover in future broadcasts, leave a comment below and we'll get around to it shortly. Tune in again tomorrow for more revelations.